It's amazing what the continent of Africa is doing for people who are recognizing it for what it truly is. In this video, we're going to get to know Mbaume Musa, who relocated from the US to Kenya with his wife and his two children. We're going to get to know his story, why he made the decision to move here and how amazing the experience has been so far. Let's get into it. I don't feel black anymore. I'm in heaven. Oh, man, I have no regrets. None. That best decision for us it was moving to the continent. I think the US was built on something that is not for African Americans. Mm -hmm. I did not want to raise my children in that type of environment. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, seeing my family happy, my wife is happy, my children are happy. It's not about how much you're coming with or what's saved in your account, because that's going to get blown, mm -hmm. right? It's about how much you're bringing in every month. And yeah. since moving here to Kenya, yeah. we felt safe. As you guys know, I'm in Kenya. I'm so excited to be here. Today, I am interviewing Musa, who's migrated from America to Kenya. He lives here with his wife and his children. Let's get to know him. I know he had a pretty amazing job that was paying him about $300,000 a year. He still left that and came all the way here to live here. Let's get to know him and find out why exactly he chose Kenya and why he's decided to settle in Africa at this point in time. Let's go and speak to him. All right, guys, as I said, I've got Mbaume Musa here with me. He moved from the U.S. to Kenya about a year ago. Hi, Mbaume Musa. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Glad to be here, happy to be here. Same, same. So what led you here? Why are you here? Why Kenya? You here? Yeah. Oh man, a new start, getting back to the roots, mm -hmm. right? I think the U.S. was built on something that is not for African Americans. Mm -hmm. So looking at the continent, moving back home, mm -hmm. Uh, thinking about what my ancestors would want me to do mm -hmm. as also, you know, the almighty supreme being. So my spirit was driving me to Africa. Yeah. It was originally Ghana okay. to start because, you know, they had a year of return. That's right. So it was a lot of welcoming for the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And then it was Tanzania mm -hmm. and then ultimately Kenya. Kenya, okay. So that's why we're here. Okay. Uh, what were you doing over in the U.S.? I was account manager okay. for a few years, okay. and then also I was in NDT. I was testing. I was an um, inspector okay. uh, for a little bit, mm -hmm. and also for you know the last I guess ten years mm -hmm. I was a real estate investor. Okay. So I knew from the start, mm -hmm. as soon as I started working and you know graduating from college, I knew that I didn't want to work for somebody for the rest of my life. Yeah. So I was kind of like planting seeds, Good. so it allowed me to move my life isn't dictated on somebody else mm. um, so that's what led me to be able to relocate to Africa uh, with my family my wife and my two children okay here. okay so when you made decisions around the jobs that you decided to get into when you were over in America were you thinking about moving to Africa at some point or it was more just freedom while you were still over in it was America? more freedom I always thought about Africa mm -hmm. because I have a lot of friends that are from Africa oh, okay. that were born in Africa okay. whether it be Sierra Leone, Ghana, mostly like the West Coast but uh, I always had Africa on my mind. Yeah. Uh, it was a point in my life where me and my wife were talking about relocating outside of our like we were in the Philadelphia area mm -hmm. so we thought about relocating to Atlanta, Florida, somewhere in the U.S. but yeah. we thought Wait a minute, it's still gonna be, we're still in the US. Mm -hmm. It's still pushing the certain agendas that they like to push. Yeah. And we wanna be able to give our children something else. Okay. Um, so that's why we came to, to Kenya. Okay, how old are you, kid? My children, my son is seven and my daughter is five years old. Okay. And they absolutely love it oh, here. Oh, really? They love it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The only <laughs> issue is my son loves toys. Okay. So toys aren't really readily available mm -hmm. here. And if they are available, they're extremely expensive yeah but that's the only issue so right. if you're just dealing with that issue mm -hmm. I have no complaints yeah you know okay so, Amazing. Yeah. so what made you choose Kenya because um, you mentioned thinking about Ghana Tanzania did you explore any of those places before choosing Kenya or you just I did research okay I didn't visit any country okay. before coming here okay. but my wife on my birthday in 2021 mm -hmm. my wife took me to a nice restaurant and there was a table of beautiful women next next to us that were all from Kenya. Okay. A couple of them were from other countries, but they're mainly from Kenya. Mm -hmm. 
and they talk to us about you know the development how it developed here the internet connection you know we love that yeah um, and then also the school system yeah. here so that's what pretty much brought us here mm -hmm. i know Tanz tanzania isn't as developed as kenya mm -hmm. or, or maybe ghana mm -hmm. um, yeah so we moved here to kenya just to, for our children too, okay. you know, we want to give them a better life. Yeah. And I know Ghana, Tanzania, or Kenya would have provided, or any other country mm -hmm. in the continent mm -hmm. would have provided that. Mm -hmm. But I know the school system is very good here. Okay. And then getting acclimated is, mm -hmm. uh, it was so easy, you know, getting a real estate agent mm -hmm. and looking for apartments or homes yeah. and visa and okay. all that. It was, it was very it was easy and seamless, fun. yes. Okay. So if anybody's looking for uh, to relocate to the continent, mm -hmm. I would definitely say look into Kenya because mm -hmm. it's very, really good. Okay. So did you have any help when you were planning to move or did you do it all yourself? It was all on our own. There is an amazing black expat group here that are very helpful. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it might be 200, 300 plus expats oh, in that group. There. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if you need anything, mm -hmm. whether it be small or big or favor, or needed to learn about the visa process or anything of that, anything, mm. um, they're, they're there to help you. Okay. Did you have any major challenges when you were planning the move and then actually making the move happen? So you didn't come on holiday before you moved, did you? Or did you? No. You I, just moved. I just moved. You're crazy. We, I, 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 I left my job. Wow. We sold our items. Wow. And we, we booked a flight and we came here. And that was it. Yes, and a lot of people looked at us like we were crazy. <laughs> and it does sound crazy, but when, when your heart's in the right place and you're 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 really on the right path and you're guided, you, you're gonna trust your gut. Yeah. And and my shout out to my wife, Dorothy Musa. She allowed me to lead our family. You know, she allowed me to lead and you know, we're here and we're happy. Yeah. But yeah, it, the only challenges was preparing our minds mentally. Right. Yeah. Uh, because you have to let go of that American, that Western mindset. Mm. You have to come here with an open mind. Yeah. Because you may get disappointed, mm -hmm. and you may just want to move back home. It's not move, uh, people aren't, aren't uh, coming out with the menu fast enough or yeah. certain foods aren't the same as the US. Yeah. So you have to really prepare your mind and just, you know. Make it happen. Yeah, make it happen. Yeah, right. So, But I knew I had to do something for my family because I did not want to raise my children in that type of environment. Mm. Um, there's a lot of violence, you know, yeah. racial injustice, yeah. um, all those things. It's such that we can talk on and on yeah. about what's happening in the U.S. But I think African, the African continent will give us a better better life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think safety is one of the biggest things. Oh man, that's number one. That's number yeah. one. And yeah. since moving here to Kenya, yeah. we felt safe. It's something though, because we'll be at a restaurant like mm -hmm. this, and there'll be a place for the kids to, to play at, mm -hmm. you know? And you won't be able to see the play area. And then my children, like the first time I went to a restaurant, my children said, can I go play? And in the US, we're like, no, wait till you eat your food mm -hmm. and then you can go play. Okay. But the local said, they're okay, they're safe here. And that moved me, I said, you know what? I think we made the right decision, Yeah. you know? Yeah. And Kenya, I don't know about any other country in Africa, mm -hmm. but Kenya, they cater to children. Okay. You know, most restaurants or a decent amount of restaurants, mm -hmm. they have a place for children to play. Okay. So we we adults, we can enjoy our drink, we can enjoy our food, mm -hmm. have adult conversations, mm -hmm. and our children can play together okay. safely. Right. You know. Right. And so. you don't have to worry about it. That's amazing. Yes. But generally, safety, I think, it's an overall thing. You yes. definitely feel safer in most African countries yes. actually than you would in the West. Absolutely. So, come yeah. to come to malls, going to malls, mm -hmm. they. they wind you down, yeah. you go to a metal detector. Mm -hmm. um, so they're proactive. Mm -hmm. Instead of waiting for something to happen, yeah. they're proactive. Yeah. Um, so yeah. and I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if I gotta if it is an inconvenience to, you know, take my phone out and take my keys out yeah. and open my bag to make sure I don't have anything dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I that makes me feel safe and yeah. other people are safe as well. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. Have you experienced any culture shock? Culture shocks. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I Uber a lot. Okay. And a lot of Kenyans listen to country music. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> they love they oh, love country too. music, oh. and that's fine too. Yeah. You know that it's not too much of a culture shock, but um. Yeah. And then talking to the locals, and telling them like my black experience in America, and they're mm. like, why Why would you move to 
Africa. Yeah. You know, we're trying to go to the U.S. Yeah. You're moving here, yeah. and I tell them our gripes and our our issues there, yeah. um, and our problems, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't know that." Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a culture shock to me because they didn't they don't know our issues Absolutely. in the U.S. and we don't know theirs, mm -hmm. right? Coming mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's important to like really bridge the gap. Yeah. Um, have you done like have you do you go to the local markets and stuff like yes, that? Yes, we we definitely you go to do? the local markets okay. and we go to the grocery stores here as well. Okay. But that was one of our things. Move to Kenya and move to the continent of Africa and live like a local. Okay. I think that a lot of people move here and they wanna live like American mm. and I think that's a downfall. Yeah. You know, if you wanna relocate to Kenya or any other uh, country in Africa, you should definitely live like a local. Uh, see Please where they're the shopping. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah, and then patronizing their their businesses Absolutely. too. You know, so you yeah. want to give back. You yeah. want to do something mm -hmm. to help the community out. Yeah. So definitely shopping local. We mm -hmm. get our fruits and veggies from local mm -hmm. places, I and mean, we have a lot of local friends as well. Okay. So we're not just in one bubble. Yeah. You know, so we understand each other. Yeah. You know? Okay. And with the cost of living as well, would you say it's cheaper to live here than it was in the US or it's more expensive? It depends on your lifestyle. Mm. So I can live here and spend more money than I would in the US. Okay. Right? Or I can live here and spend less. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it all depends on your lifestyle. You like to go out to eat mm -hmm. a lot. If you like to, I guess, have a big mansion, a big house, mm -hmm. it'll be more expensive. But right now our lifestyle, our cost of living is a lot lower okay. than in the US. Okay. Um, I didn't come here to live like an American, mm -hmm. where I would stay my, my butt back in yeah, America, no, yeah. you know. <laughs> you might as well, um, okay. But a lot of people have a have a problem trying to adapt mm. to the change. Yeah. And then they wind up blowing through their money, mm. and they go back they to the to U.S. Back. and have to start over. Yeah. Uh, so I knew coming here, we had to make it work. Yeah. I don't care if I had to shout to the locals or yeah. rub shoulders. I, I don't care. And if the locals are doing it. Exactly. Yeah. Who am I? Exactly. I'm not better than you, exactly. and you're not better than me. Exactly. You know, so so that was that was very important yeah. uh, to live like a local. Okay. Yeah. So you had all these businesses going on over in America, and you let. Well, you're still doing real estate over yeah, there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's all you're doing over there. At yeah. The that's all I'm doing. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So over here, are you doing any work, any projects, or anything like that, or it's still all still focused on what you're doing? So, I do real estate in the U.S. and then here. I'm a YouTuber or okay. a digital content creator. Yeah, okay. So I just try to bridge the gap and help out the locals, go to orphanages, help okay. out. I think that's my that's my calling to be yeah. a servant okay. to the people, mm -hmm. whether wherever I'm at. Yeah. Um, but I think that's my job. That's mm -hmm. my true job. Mm -hmm. My job is not nine to five, clocking in and out. I don't think that's that's too much of a job. I no. think the job is serving people, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's what I want to do. <laughs> So it's so important to have a residual income. Mm -hmm. Obviously my income is coming from my real estate mm -hmm. that I've been growing for the past 10 years because mm -hmm. I knew that I didn't want to work for anybody else. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely crucial. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that, oh, I need to come with 100,000 or 50,000 or 5,000. It's not about how much you're coming with or what's saved in your account because that's going to get blown, mm -hmm. right? It's about how much you're bringing in every month. Mm -hmm. You know, what is your budget every month? How much is your your cost of your apartment or your home, mm -hmm. um, how much are you spending on transportation, mm -hmm. food, are you going out all the time? Mm -hmm. Do you like doing that all the time? Yeah. Do you like, like the nightlife? Do you yeah. like the drinks? Yeah. Um, so it's definitely all about the residual. Mm -hmm. I think people can literally come with zero dollars, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if you're getting money coming in every month, you're gonna be okay. That's right. Obviously you need a rainy day funds or yes. something, you know, happens, you gotta get back to the US or wherever mm -hmm. you come from. Mm -hmm. But but definitely work on residual income uh, yeah. and not, uh, Just savings. saving, yes. Savings to me is not important. Yes. Because you can blow that. Very you know, quickly. You can have a family emergency. Yeah. And it could all be gone. Mm -hmm. You know, that's and then true. that'll leave you going back to the States and starting all, all over. All over again. That's so, right. Yes. Yeah. People always ask, oh, how much do I need to move to Ghana? Yes. Da, 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 da. And I'm just like, it's so hard to say, like you said, it depends mm. on your lifestyle. Mm. But at the same time, yes, it's what you're making every month yes. that counts. Like, but with a family of four, my wife and my two children, myself, mm -hmm. I knew that, you know, residual income's key. You know, I have to pay for the school fees. Yeah. I have to pay for the roof overhead. Mm -hmm. And we like to go out, you know, every now and again. Yeah. How much and money do I spend yeah. a month? It's my kid's school fees. Yeah. That's what's okay. getting me. <laughs> it's my kid's school fees. Okay. But it's worth it. So a rough estimate, I would say maybe 2K. 
Okay. Maybe. That's not bad. Maybe 2K. Yeah, that's not yeah. bad at all. Yeah, and it, it, all, it all depends on what we do during the month the as month, well. The month, yeah, you sure. You know, sometimes we go to safari or mm. whatever. So it definitely depends on what we do. But yeah. I would say 2K a month. Okay. A safe number. Mm. It could be more, it could be less sometimes. Yeah, sure. But definitely 2K. Okay. Yeah, you because know, you still have to pour into your business. Yeah. That's pouring into you. That's right. Right? Yeah. So that's crucial. Okay. And in managing your business over in America while you live here, has that been difficult? It has at times, okay. but I have an amazing support system and family. Shout out to my mom and my sisters and my grandmother. But okay. I have a, a great support system okay. back at home where if I need something, I can definitely call on them and okay. they'll deliver. Okay. You know, they'll okay. show the properties, whatever have you. Okay. And they'll do the, do the hard work for me. Okay, um, great. And I appreciate them. Shout out to mom. <laughs> She's there probably watching. Yes. <laughs> so has Kenya been exactly exactly what you expected it to be or has it been different I mean, if it has been different how different has it been for you it exceeded my expectations because oh. i try not to have expectations coming here mm. and the people are so welcoming they're so nice mm. the food the culture everything has been i really can't complain about anything mm. right because if i start complaining then i think back at my life before mm. in america mm -hmm. in the u.s mm -hmm. right where we're dealing with so many things, watching the news, um, you're seeing tragedies after tragedy. I don't have anything to complain about and I feel like I'm in heaven. Oh, that's I really so feel nice. like I'm in heaven. Yeah. And even though I haven't traveled to other countries yet, Kenya's definitely home. Mm. It's definitely home. Oh, yes. That's amazing. Oh. I think I say that about Ghana too. Mm -hmm. I'm like Ghana is heaven. I think even emotionally moving to Africa it does something for you that just you just can't get anywhere in the west it's liberating it's so liberating because yes. i had done a fair bit of traveling like after uni and stuff like that and i never felt the way i feel when i'm in ghana mm -hmm. in those places wow. you know what i mean and yeah. it's just like that's what i tell people back at home please come to africa i don't care if you come to kenya <laughs> ghana wherever yeah. um but it's liberating um and you you don't feel I don't feel black anymore. Yeah. You know, and in the States, you know, we deal with so much and you feel that. Mm -hmm. You feel that weight on you. Mm -hmm. But when you get off that plane mm -hmm. and they said, Karibu sana, right? Yeah. And they said, welcome. Yeah. Right? Welcome home, brother. Yeah. They're saying that to you. Yeah. The, the Uber driver, yeah, everybody's telling you, welcome that. home. Yeah. We want you here. Yeah. And then, you know, seeing my family happy, my wife is happy, my children are happy. It was very easy getting acclimated here. Mm -hmm. Very easy. Yeah. Uh, but this is this is our heaven on earth. That's so nice. That's yes. so touching. And I can relate so much. It's so nice to hear. Yeah. Um, so have you made any local friends? I know sometimes when you move, well for me for instance, I felt like in the beginning, now I have a lot of people that are friends that are locals. But when I first moved, I felt like I had more interactions with people that were from the diaspora. So for me, it was the opposite. Okay. It wasn't us hanging out with a lot of expats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we made it a purpose to befriend locals okay and they were so welcoming yeah. that it just happened naturally okay we live in an apartment building with a ton of locals okay. that we befriended okay. um, we're on we're constantly going to local restaurants we're making sure we patronize their businesses awesome. so we meet a lot of locals there okay. and they're they're so interested in our story yeah oh my goodness you never been to Kenya and you just moved you just packed your yeah, bags and everything and moved here they're like wow I know, um, yeah. but yeah it was the total opposite we yeah. have a lot of local friends here uh, rather than the expat mm. we do have our expat friends okay um, but we have have more local friends here yeah. and they're very supportive mm. um, and helpful yeah okay that's amazing that's yes. really really good I think leaving everything that you had built over in the mm -hmm. US behind and just like coming on holiday and just yeah. deciding never to go back it's yeah, yeah it's no it's definitely really... it's definitely hard yeah for me as a man I have to make the best decision for my family yeah and that best decision for us was moving to the to continent yeah. right moving yeah. to Kenya yeah. and I have no regrets none that's amazing. none I'm like this is the best decision that I ever made yeah. for my family that's amazing. right and it's all about uh, creating a legacy mm. Um, right so and you want to go where you're welcome mm -hmm. you want to go where you're treated right mm -hmm. you know a lot of African Americans I could say we travel to Europe mm -hmm. we travel to places where they don't they, they don't treat us well no. you know no. you hear a, a bunch of horror stories of traveling to European countries because it's I guess the media portrays mm -hmm. you know those European countries go to Mexico Europe mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we need to come back home to Africa. I think so. You know, too. we have beautiful beaches here. Absolutely. We have Mabasa, Zanzibar, yeah. and other places throughout the yeah. continent. So I think we need to come back home and, and holiday, yeah. right? Come on a holiday right. and experience yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. Well, Musa has said it all. I mean, I feel like <laughs> I keep saying it. Obviously, I live in Ghana, so I talk about Ghana all the time. I've been in Kenya for the past, I don't know how many hours. It hasn't been that long, and I'm so impressed by it. So I can completely understand why Faume Musa has so many good things to say about Kenya and him and his family settling in well and all that. So thank you so much for spending time with us. So Sana. <laughs> I don't know. What, what do I say Thank to you. That? That's well, no, I'm no. saying Asante Sana. So how do I say you're welcome? Uh, Karibu. Karibu. Okay. Karibu, okay. yes. Okay. Yes. So that's the locals teaching me that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> okay. You know? And now you're teaching me. Yes. There you go. So that's, that's what we do. Right? Okay, amazing. How can they contact you if they want to find you? So uh, my YouTube channel is Mfalmi Musa. And then also my Instagram handle is Mfalmi underscore Musa. Uh, so you can follow me on, on IG, you can subscribe to my channel, go along with the journey. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm hoping to uh, meet some other people that have migrated to Kenya as well before I leave. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow your bliss so that life is short. Follow your bliss, Nani Paya Deng. Follow your bliss, Nadi Besidia, and follow your bliss, Nadi Nemada. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.